Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this week I'm covering the Tyne Theatre and Opera House. I recently went on a tour of this building and I thought I'd make sort of a video about its history and talk about it because it's the second largest theatre in uh, Newcastle but it doesn't get the same sort of level of reputation as uh, obviously Theatre Royale does receive. Some say uh, the, the sort of lack of recognition comes from its location towards the west end of Newcastle City Centre, located along Westgate Road. Uh, this is less frequented by theatre goers in comparison to sort of the Theatre Royale on its um, elegant Grey Street location. The Tyne Theatre and Opera House actually opened in 1867. This was designed by William P. Parnell, designed for Joseph Cohen, which who was uh, son of Sir Joseph Cohen. Joseph Cohen was a prominent citizen and a member of parliament for Newcastle between 1865 and 1873. The money for the construction of the theatre likely came from the uh, family business, which was Blade and Brickworks, located four miles to the west of Newcastle. The facade of the theatre is of uh, particular merit. This is for featuring an Italian uh, brick and stone facade. The facade is three storeys with five bays with rounded arched Venetian Renaissance windows in the upper story. Internally, the auditorium features three horseshoe balconies with superimposed boxes which flank the elliptical arch stage. When the venue originally opened, it could actually seat 3,000 people, but with updating seating and fire capacity, it can only um, seat around half that number now. There have been some major modifications to the overall structure since the building's opening. Two of the six boxes have been blocked in by semicircular uh, panels. In 1917, however, with the growing popularity of movies, this actually led to the closure of the theatre. But in 1919, Oswald Stoll uh, bought the theatre and changed the building into a cinema to sort of follow the business trends at the time, with uh, cinemas increasing in popularity. With this, a new projection box was installed. The cinema screen was erected directly in front of the stage. The cinema was the first in Newcastle to show the talkies. Theatre survived as a cinema uh, for four decades. However, with a rise of popularity in television, this resulted in the decline of people attending the cinema. In order to combat this, throughout the 1960s, the theatre began showing X-rated films. However, even with this sort of change of tone, the theatre did actually close in March 1974. The cinema remained closed for three years, during which uh, a Save the Stole campaign was started by Jack Dixon. The theatre was actually listed in 1974 by Historic England as Grade 2 Star. This was actually later updated in 1985 to Grade 1. Grade 1 is actually the highest listing which a building can receive in England. In 1976, the Stoll Theatre Corporation agreed to lease the theatre to the Tyne Theatre Trust for 28 years. During the conversion from a cinema back into a theatre, it was actually discovered the original 1867 uh, machinery had remained in situ along the stage sets of the last show performed, all of which had just been simply covered with a cinema screen. However, there were some challenges to uh, reopening the theatre. On Christmas Day in 1985, a fire broke out backstage at the theatre. This completely gutted the fly tower. Remarkably, the stage was um, completely rebuilt to its original specification. This is part of being a grade listed building. This is likely to be undertaken in this way. And this used uh, salvaged ironwork wherever possible. This was actually led by Jack Dixon. The stage machinery was reconstructed and remains in full work and order. After 11 months and £1.5 million spent, the theatre actually reopened after the fire. The existing stage in the Tyne Theatre and Opera House represents one of the most complete working examples of an English wood stage, possessing four bridges, eight cuts, one carpet cut, two corner traps, two staircase traps, three object traps and one grave trap. And overhead there are a series of drum and shaft mechanisms to operate synchronised scenes changes. So those different traps are basically different cuts in the stages, different places where people can appear from and different traps where they can raise objects up. What that demonstrates is that it has a traditional English wood stage 
with a, a wide variety of different traps. In regards to the building today, it is now managed by the Tyne Theatre and Opera House Limited. A new subsidy has been created, um, obviously by the Tyne Theatre and Opera House Preservation Trust.